So, I know it's a CJ7, but tell us a little bit about it. Like, kind of your history with it and where where you started building it and whatnot. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a 1980 CJ7, making it 44 years this year. And I've had it for 32. 32? Of wow. Those. Uh, it was 12 years old when I got it and um, loved it ever since. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just left it stock for most of the time that I've had it. In the last 10 years or so, I started building it up. Yeah. And, and just, uh, I don't like mud. I'm just a rock there, crawler. There. Right? <laughs> so uh, uh, I kept the regular, the the inline six, okay. the 250A straight six. Uh, I did rebuild it and then I bored it out a little bit. I put a Headman header on it. Uh, I fuel injected it because okay. this old was carbureted back then. Yep, yep. Then I, um, I've got hydro steering on it. And uh, is it full hydro or hydro assist? Hydro assist, hydro assist, okay, with a redneck ram on it. Okay, I kept the original axles, but I did put chromolies in them. Okay, I re geared it to 454 gears. Okay, I put chromoly one piece shafts in. Uh, these are just 33s, but on the tires, but I get everything I want to do done with them so yeah, I could imagine I can say I, I think I've seen you at Little Blue and at Disney yeah yep. yeah so if it'll do that I'd know it'll do a lot of stuff sure. <laughs> that, that video has been pretty wild it, it it'll come up and resurface every you know six or eight months or so but yeah I've lost count but um, collectively it's had nearly 20 million views oh wow on that thing. man and that's not on one site but yeah, uh, yeah. that's that's how many have seen it. And I think what people like about that, because I've wondered, because I mean, there's much cooler rigs or bigger ones or people that do it flawlessly. I had to give it a couple attempts, you know, but yep, yep. I think what catches people's eyes is that it's a it's an old classic CJ and someone's wheeling it. It's very sharp being a classic there. You've kind of done some retro stuff to it that is, you know, update a little bit. I yeah. think that's what catches everybody's eyes that. Yeah. And you know, you started up just now. I swore it was a V8. Right. It sounded like it. <laughs> I've got a uh, well. I've got a Flowmaster 40 on it, and okay. then so I, I, I tell people that I did a belly dump on the exhaust for practical reasons. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> made it sound a lot cooler too. <laughs> yep. But yep. the the belly dump exhaust right in the middle of the underneath prevents you ever from crossing the right. Cross. It's higher inside, tucked up higher than the frame. Okay. So it won't okay. ever get crushed. Right. Absolutely. But it's got a downspout that makes it reverberate off the ground. <laughs> it's there. You go. Good. Heck yeah. <laughs> For a straight six. Yeah. What T case is in it? Uh, it's. Oh man, I can't remember. It's the original. I didn't so do anything. Is that the there. Quadra track? No, it's not a Quadra track. Um, or Dana, not a Dana 300. I don't think those came in the CJs. It's a. Uh, I, I can't even remember now. Okay. I forgot. I drew a blank, but. Uh, it's the original, just one stick. Um, I put Detroit lockers okay. in both. I don't know if I said that, but um, it's locked in the front and rear. And then um, trying to think what else I did. Oh, I put metal cloaks on the front fenders. So those are not uh, original, but I saved my originals and they're okay. uncut. Yeah. So I powder coated these and that was... It was pretty hard getting the paint to match on. I could imagine. You know, back then it was like 35 year old paint. <laughs> right, but, right. Uh, the shop did a great job, and man, that just opened a whole new world to me because yeah, yeah. The, it, even though it's just got the original, um, uh, well, it's it's leaf springs. It's not original, but it's just got leaf spring suspension. Yeah. Um, it'll still really flex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I put uh, boomerangs. A good buddy of mine made those boomerangs on the front and the back, and um, those really, really help because. So you when you say boomerang, I know a little bit about these, but for the ones yeah. that do not know, can you point out what you're talking about? So this boomerang is a is a longer shackle, and it's got a bend in it, an elbow joint, just like an actual boomerang. And what that does by putting them on the front is that normally this this was just pivoting on the top bolt the the spring was pivoting on the top bolt so if you wanted to say you're coming up to a 18 inch 
ledge, you know, somewhere, you know, right in here that your tire couldn't just naturally crawl over. Right. You'd have to bump it pretty good in order to compress the spring up and then pivot back. Okay. And so what a boomerang does is it allows you to, comp to hit and the Jeep itself moves forward. The spring does not and it, and it, it rotates back. Okay. In order for you to bump up a a, a, what, a ledge without having to really do a serious bump, gotcha. it kind of load preloads your spring for you. Yeah. And when yeah. you get on the apex of the edge, then whoop, you're just right up on top. Okay. So the the boomerangs are are great for that. And then they do give you a little bit more just articulation as well because the the pivot point is quite a bit lower than it was when it was stopped. So. Right. It does give me quite a bit. So did it change any on-road drivability? No, because with springs, I mean, with leaf suspension all the way around, it's pretty stiff pretty on the road. Already. Um, I mean, in fact, I took both the front and rear sway bars off years ago. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I'll drive it down the highway at 65, no okay. issue. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. I did put, since I got the metal cloaks, I ended up putting, uh, spacers in one and a half inch spacer because i was i was rubbing right here normally my my limiting factor was bottoming out in the fender well but that's never going to happen now because these just gave me so much more travel heck yeah so then my limiting factor became turning radius and okay. hitting the spr the leaf spring so i i scooted the tires out just a tad okay so that i don't i don't rub at all at all anymore you run in uh Mickey's? Sticky these Mickey's? Are, these are not stickies, that, but it's the Baja Claw Tough Truck Challenge series, which okay. is kind of kind of cool for me because one of my best friends, Brad Austin, who is legendary in the off-road world, I hope he doesn't see this or he'll get a big head, <laughs> but uh, uh, Brad builds big, giant, you know, tube chassis and buggies right here in, in Oklahoma, okay. uh, up there kind of by Guthrie, mm -hmm. and he... Um, Oh, I guess it was maybe 12 years ago or so. He was selected to go to the Top Truck Challenge, which is a thing out in California. Yeah. He won it, and oh, then nice. he went back for the Masters, like all the winners, and, and then he won that. Oh, nice. So, Heck yeah. So he might have won Top Truck Top Truck Challenge, but I've got the tires. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the TTC tires. Yep, yep. <laughs> Heck yeah. We're actually doing a uh, Dirt Fest coming up in May. Oh. It, it, we're doing a similar tough truck challenge style obstacle course. So oh. I have to get a hold of them and get them out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heck that'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah, Heck he's yeah. got a, a huge, huge buggy, and he's done, he's done it all. I mean, he's Heck he's been yeah. at the top of his game and featured in all kinds of magazines and all that. Nice. He's, nice. Yeah, he's done a whole lot of the work on this for me. Has he? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Heck yeah. Yeah. I mean, everywhere I look, there's a little bit of his handiwork you know, he's, he's <laughs> done right. off and on i do have one cool thing to show you on the other side yeah absolutely let's do it in 2015 okay at disney uh where little blue is um i had i did not have this built up hardly at all it had regular 31 inch tires it wasn't locked no hydro assist fuel or uh, carbureted just all the stuff that i just said i did right. i didn't have any of that i didn't even have um, the two doors for the extra built up uh, roll cage and i tried a hill I couldn't make it up. It was losing traction. Tried to back down and discovered at that time I only had one brake. My front passenger brake was the only one working. So, and I didn't think enough to to not let on the brake. I just held it onto it for dear life because I was going downhill pretty good. And at the bottom, uh, couldn't keep it from rolling. And so it rolled. I only have a lap belt. I still only have a lap belt. So I just bear hug the steering wheel. But with no doors, when I rolled upside down, this leg came out. And then it landed on that leg. And right here is the dent from my leg. And so there were, there were, uh, it was during Big Meat Run, big event every year. And there were hundreds of people everywhere 
uh, the buddy that was I was wheeling with, he he had his own Jeep. He runs, yelling for help, and when when he saw me, this Jeep landed on this side. It landed on its side, then almost went upside down, and then came back down on this side. So it wasn't a full roll. It was just a ugly tip over. But uh, you can see the belly of the Jeep with my legs sticking out. He wasn't for sure if it was still attached or not. I can't even imagine. So, and he's a Marine. Yeah. Uh, and so he instantly came around my side, saw that I was conscious and awake, and then boom, took off running, got help. The next thing I know, there's 10 guys there, and they just pushed the Jeep up enough. Somebody cuts my seatbelt, they pull me out, and uh, um, everyone's a suit. Well, there's Jeeps are coming in left and right to secure it because I was still on the hill. So they were looking up winch lines and all that kind of thing, getting it stabilized. And um, it was kind of like a uh, uh, my own little guardian angel because uh, there was one couple there that kind of put themselves in charge. The wife, I found out, they were from Missouri. Don't remember their names. I wish I did, but uh, they were just you know, good Samaritans, you know, that stopped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She put herself in charge of me and her husband kind of put himself in charge of the, the Jeep. Okay. And so I found out she's an ER nurse. So she tells me, we've got to get this leg stabilized. We need to get it up. I'm going to have to cut the pant leg because I need to know if it's compounded. Because then we got a whole other set of stuff we got to work with, you know, right. to keep it from bleeding out. So she took the, cut the pant leg up got the laces on the boot because it had crushed my eyelets on the late on the boot okay. <laughs> so yeah. just cut the laces pulled the the uh, the uh, boot off and it's it's pretty it's pretty ugly but it wasn't compounded and so she then says okay we've got to get this stabilized they called for um, uh, emergency uh, EMTs came in from Disney and uh, they put a little makeshift splint on it, carried me out on a gurney, uh, and get me to the hospital in uh, uh, Pryor, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, went there. They're, they're taking uh, x-rays, and the doctor says, okay, I know that this is, you know, pretty crushed. It's probably just loose. You know, your, your uh, tibia and fibia are probably just shattered. So we're gonna prep the emergency room so that we can at least get it stabilized enough that we can get you to Tulsa to have surgery. Okay, sure, so I'm signing paperwork. They took all the x-rays, I'm signing paperwork, sitting there in a wheelchair in the ER, and the doctor comes back in and says, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but not only is your leg not pulverized or crushed, there's not even a fracture in it. So what, what happened again? was well 3600 pound jeep landed on it and i bent the rock bar with my leg yeah he didn't even fracture my leg that is insane and so i said well then can i just stand up then because i don't know how i'm going to use crutches you know and yeah. and uh he goes yeah i guess as much as you can physically withstand so i just stood right up there and kind of bounced on it said, yeah i think we could go holy wow. walked out of there and uh when i got back to disney that Good Samaritan couple had not only taken care of me on the trail, but they righted up the Jeep, filled all the fluids, and then drove it back to where I was staying. And uh, so there's the Jeep sitting there with keys in it. And so I think, you know, can I get right back on the horse so that I'm not scared of it or anything? So I jump in, and then that couple pulls up. And they had some two teenage daughters, and they, I, I jump out of the Jeep and walk up to them, and they cannot, they're speechless. The, <laughs> the wife starts crying, like, what on earth? And said, it's not even fractured. She said, you've got this giant dent in your leg, and you bent the rock bar. How is it not even broken? <laughs> and uh, I said, I don't know, but it isn't. And so, uh, I'll tell you I what, was, that, that right there is the, uh, that's why. I mean, that's right. I, that's exactly why. Yeah, so that became my life verse. I yeah. had a sticker made. In fact, this is kind of cool. Probably, well, that year, that summer, so five, six, eight years ago, right here in this parking <laughs> lot, we put this 
stick on. I had ordered it from another couple that made the sticker and then uh, they had it ready when I came to a, a meet and greet here. And we sat here in the parking lot, maybe probably four or five spaces over there and put that sticker on. Oh. And, and that's, I didn't fix it. You know, I left the dent. Absolutely, you, know, you can't reminder. fix something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave that. <laughs> so that's really got my life versed. The Lord is my protection. With Him, I'm safe because I can't explain it any other way. It, it, I've still got awesome. the dent. I yeah. got boots on, so you can't see it, but I've still got the dent. And I have permanent nerve damage, so I don't have any feeling from there down. Yeah, but it's not such a bad thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> one foot's cold tonight, and the other one's not. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for indulging me, letting me tell you that story. Absolutely, we appreciate your time and, and going over this. Your, your Jeep is one of the nostalgic ones you see on social media, and you're like, man, that, that's a cool Jeep, and, <laughs> and the guy wheeling it is even cooler. So well, thank we you. definitely it's... appreciate your time going over with us maybe we'll see you out on the trail and get to wheel with you soon absolutely so thank you heck yeah appreciate it <laughs> have a good one thank you yes sir